So guys, we are going to continue the discussion with respect to MySQL and in this particular video, we are going to discuss about a very super important topic that is MySQL stored procedures. Now stored procedure is a prepared SQL query that you can save so that the query can be reused over and over again. That basically means it can be executed over and over again. Let's imagine that you have probably written some queries and in that specific queries, you also provide parameters and you are going to execute it continuously and probably retrieving data. So in all this particular case, you can save that entire query in the form of stored procedure and you can execute it. Definitely, it will help you to, you know, uh, execute it quickly. You'll be able to see the output very fast soon, right? Over here in stored procedure, you also have an options to basically provide parameters, also take out the parameters also like provide an input as a parameter and also if you want any kind of specific output, you can do that. Now, let's go ahead and let's try to see that how a stored procedure is basically created. Now, first of all, what I'm going to do, I'm going to use my customer database and after this, let's see, I have some data like select start from student, okay? So, this is specifically my uh, uh, you know, the query, you can see over here, I have some amount of data over here. Now, what I can do is that let's say that I'm executing this small query again and again. Okay. Select star from student. I'm just taking an example. You can write any kind of complex query in a stored procedure. Now, suppose if I want to create a stored procedure, because I'm going to execute this query again and again, all I have to do, go over here and just click on create stored procedure. So you'll be able to see this one. And let's say that I'm naming this stored procedure as get student underscore info. So here you can see that this is how a stored procedure uh, syntax is, how you can basically create it. You use a create procedure, uh, create procedure keyword along with that you give the procedure name and then whatever query you are going to execute again and again, you'll basically write inside this. So over here, I'll say select star from student. Let's say that I'm just going to execute this query and probably I want to uh, create this particular, I have named this particular stored procedure get student underscore info. Okay, so after this, this is how you basically create it. Right now, I'm not giving any kind of input parameters. Later on, I'll also show you how you can give input parameters and probably see it. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to apply it. So here you'll be getting an option of applying and then just execute this SQL query. Okay, so once you create this here, you can now see that a stored procedure has actually been created. Get underscore student underscore info. Now the next thing in order to execute this, all you have to do is that just write call, call function, and then you basically call get student underscore info. Right? So when you probably give this and just execute it, you will be able to see that I'm able to see all the data from the students, right? Select star from students. So here you can definitely see all the values that you are able to get it over here. So this is how simple a stored procedure is, right? So just have to use the call keyword and just write the stored procedure name and then you'll be able to get it. Now let me do one thing. Let me just go and make some changes over here. Now what I'm going to do over here is that suppose let's consider that I'm going to give some kind of parameters, okay? So in this particular case, let's say that I'm going to give a parameter like select star from student where student dot age is equal to some values like 31 okay so i'm just going to execute it okay let's see what will happen now i'm going to go back over here and just execute this thing now here you can see that my entire query is getting executed because that entire query i've put it inside my stored procedure one condition that i had written my age should be 31 now can i give an option where i can make the stored procedure parameterized you know so i just give my input from here and based on that it takes the input over here so in order to define the input, there are various ways. One is in, out, and you can also use the combination of in, out, okay? First of all, I'll just show you with the help of in, okay? So here I'm going to basically use in. Let's consider that I'm using in. You can also write it in capital letter. And then I'm going to give my parameter name and my data type name, that's it. So this is the parameter name that I'm actually going to give over here and I'm going to just replace it over here. So this basically says that whatever parameter I am giving over here when I'm calling this particular stored procedure, get underscore student underscore info, this will be given over here. And based on that, I will be able to retrieve the student's name. Okay, the entire information of the student. So now let me go ahead and execute this very quickly. So this has got executed. And now let me make some changes. Now here I'm basically going to say 27. 
get it select star uh, it's just, just like i'm calling this particular stored procedure with the input parameter 27 so once i see this here you can see that i'm having people with the 27 age so there is specifically that specific record i'm actually getting what we have done over here is that we have just parameterized so here i have also given 31 you can also see the records as 31 so this was one type what you can actually do in order to create parameterized things right you can also give anything like if this variable is a var care you can give var care with that specific number of parameters but always remember if i remove this student dot age okay instead i just write age is equal to age because age is also a uh, column inside my student uh, table right so if I execute this, this will definitely not get executed because it will get confused where it is basically identifying. It is not able to identify the student age column and the age parameter that is coming in. That is the reason what I have done is that I have written as student.age. Okay, so student.age is specifically saying that the student table column age is getting compared to that particular input parameter that I am actually giving. So uh, till here, I think you have you, you know this right now uh, and this is quite easy input parameters now what is the main use of the output parameters let's see this so guys till now we have discussed about the in keyword now let's say that probably I want to execute a stored procedure and return some value okay and then we can basically see that particular value so in this particular case I will just make some changes in the stored procedure first of all I will basically use out keyword that is going to give the output that what we are specifically returning from this particular stored procedure okay so here i'm just going to say that output records okay so this is the records that is getting returned uh, it should be getting returned from this particular stored procedure now this records can be my total number of records so i'll write select count star from student where student age is equal to since i'm not providing any parameter over here i can write 31 so obviously i know that how many number of records will be there three records will be there so let's execute this now what is going to happen is that when i execute this still one thing is basically missing how i will link this records with this count right so for that what i'm going to write i'm just going to set select count star into this records variable and this record variable get returns from this particular stored procedure which will have the condition as student dot age is equal to 31 so i'm just going to apply it so once I apply it over here, you will be able to see this. Now let's go and execute. Now here two changes will be there. First of all, I will give one parameter which will basically return the result, right? Whatever result is basically coming from there, from that stored procedure, it will get stored in this. And then if I want to basically display this, I can write select at the rate record as total record. Okay. So once I execute both of this, this is, should give me the answer. Let's see. So I'll execute this and finally you can see that the total number of records is 3. Let me make it to 27 because in this particular case, I will be able to get 2 records. Okay. Just to show you whether this is getting executed or not. Right. So over here you can definitely see that I'm getting 2 records. So this is some examples with respect to in and out. Uh, sorry, out and in or in and out. Now one assignment that I would like to give you, try to combine in and out and try to see like what you can basically do with it. You can also provide two parameters at a time, which can be an input parameter and which can be an output parameter. Okay. So try to give with respect to that. Uh, otherwise, just let me, let me do it for you. Uh, it's not a problem. So I will go over here and get student underscore info. Uh, first parameter I have actually given. Uh, as out record so this can also be I'll write it as in and out which will be records I can also use this and then I can also use in which will be an age okay and this will be my integer okay so this is done now next thing student dot age is equal to age select star into in records this is same I'm not going to make any changes now I'm going to just apply for it and finish it go back over here okay now what i can do i can basically provide at the rate record and 31 okay once i execute it so this has got executed if i go and see this one the total number of records are three now with respect to this if i give 27 you can actually see the output and then my total number of records are two so i hope you like this particular video i hope you were able to understand 
Please make sure that you subscribe the channel and yes, I'll see you all in the next video. Have a great day. Bye-bye.